Hi, I'm Dave Robinson, and welcome to another screencast where I'm going to be looking at, at a data set that I haven't seen before, exploring it in R, and seeing what conclusions I can draw. So as usual, usual, I'm going to be working with a Tidy Tuesday project. So each week, Tidy Tuesday releases a data set, um, and I take the new uh, each time I take the newest one and see what I can learn from it. So this is going to be a data set. Um, I just know the topic. It's on incarceration trends. So one of the most important uh, things to note about this data set is that it'll be important for me to use our uh, us to use our best judgment and be respectful and careful when reporting on trends seen here. So remember that I haven't seen this data before. I'm working within one hour, and I could make mistakes. I could um, I could uh, I could uh, have bugs. I could um. Uh, running issues, and I might not give it the full detailed uh, topic uh, treatment that a topic like this deserves. So please keep that in mind when you're watching this screencast. Having said that, I hope there's a lot that we can learn from the data set and learn about statistical analysis by, by analyzing an important data set like this one. So in particular, this is looking at, um, at questions about uh, justice, in particular county-level jail data and prison data over the last couple of, of decades, particularly looking at racial and social discrepancies um, in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So we're going to take a look at this. Um, okay, it's five data sets. All right. I'm going to... Let me see. Okay. County level, probably don't want the full raw data, might be a lot. I'm going to look at the processed versions. I'm going to try taking a look at um, prison, let's start with prison summaries, the first one. If I click this, do I get to the raw version? All right. So, I go into my RMD. And I say prison summary. I'm going to do library tidyverse, prison summary read CSV of the data, and I'm going to take a look at the data, and we have time, uh, urbanicity, which probably is rural, small, is that small, middle, I'm not sure, suburban and urban, looks like the data sets we have. We also look at categories. These include, let's see, we have race in terms of white and black. We have um, uh, g uh, gender in terms of male and female. Uh, white, black, and Native American, looks like. Um, we have totals. We have other. We also, looks like, have Asian as well. Okay, so we have a couple races. <clears throat> and this looks like incarceration rates. So number of people, I'm going to guess. I'm going to take a look at the data here. Is a prison summary by year, race, gender, or total, rate right within a category for prison population per 100,000 people. I don't know, so one thing I don't know if this means is, um, I'm guessing that could mean within one year, what fraction, in any given year, any point in time, what fraction of people uh, are in prison, as opposed to, say, lifetime probability of going to prison. I'm going to assume that's the, um, that's the meaning here. Okay, rate per 100,000. Okay, so we're going to take a look at, we have county level and prison level. Is this per, no, no, we're not looking per prison. Ah, this is across all prisons. This is, let me see, where's the county level? I don't think we have data on individual prisons here. Oh, I guess that would be county level. County level, ah, yeah, so this is overall the entire population and type of county. I think we might want to start with, okay, I'm going to start with this to get a general sense of trends, um, but I'm but probably going to move quickly to be looking at prison population, uh, at the more detailed data rather than the summaries. Okay, so we could start by, by saying um, we have relatively few urbanicities. It's not necessarily meaningful, but I'm going to take a... Uh, let me, let me clarify that. I'm going to take a look at rate per 1,000. I'm going to color it by urbanicity, and I'm going to facet it by population category. This isn't super kosher because population category mixes together. Um, I neglected to add geom line. 
mixes together different types of, uh, for example, races, genders, and so on. Um, but, and it looks like other only existed towards a certain point at which it was split up. It looks like it was split up into Latino, Native American, Asia. We don't see another category anymore. All right. And um, this is a, a total will be overall. Again, it doesn't make sense to facet all these levels. I just want to get a sense of the data that we're, that we're taking a look at. We could start by looking at just at races. To do that, we'd filter just for, um, let's see, pop category in, and we could add, we could hard code that we're looking at white, black, Latino, and Asian. Uh, did I miss uh, Native American? And uh, I think that's. Did I miss any? I can count pop category to find out. One, two, three. Four. Oh yeah, it was a total of. I'm skipping other because it, the data was available only at the very beginning. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so I, I don't. I, it's worth I think leaving out. Okay, we might want to look only since the time 1990 when the uh, when we have all the data. We can make some um, some different conclusions here. One of the first things to notice is clearly there's enormous racial discrepancy in terms of percentage of population in um, in prison. Uh, by far uh, highest um, in the black population, uh, followed by looks like Native American, Latino white Asian. There's also a large gap uh, between in urbanicity, mostly in terms of suburban versus uh, the other types of um, uh, of populations. So the, um, let's see, mm -hmm. do I have a, no, I'm just taking, I'm, I'm taking a look here. Uh, I'm thinking about how this else would be sorted. I don't think there's any particular. They, they don't, um, I'm besides taking making a better theme. I'm going to do theme set theme light. This is a way to communicate a lot about the overall population. I don't have much. I would I would um I would add to this graph from this data. The one thing worth noting is that there's a um the gap in terms of suburban versus other um uh types of, what would it be, types, uh, like, uh, what is it called, regions, uh, county type. The difference between suburban and other types of regions, that gap grows tremendously within the black subpopulation, um, and it starts really around, it, it, it really uh, sees a big gap in 2000. In other um, populations, it looks like it's mostly constant over time. So we can do some statistical testing of that. Uh, one thing, I've been trying to do a little more statistical testing. Um, we're not controlling for a lot of confounders here. Uh, the, the, uh, for example, um, populations don't stay in place over time. The makeup of populations across types of, um, of counties is going to be changing during this time. Uh, so there's, there's really a lot we can't say here. In fact, I'm not... I don't think I'm going to do a statistical test yet. I there's just so little that can be controlled for. Uh, what I was thinking of a statistical test is that we see an interaction term where we see a di general suburban suburban populations have lower incarceration rates, but that that is changed that the relationship between that and other um, uh, urbanicities has changed over time, particularly within uh, one race. So. That's taking um, one quick look at the summary data. I could also take a look at the pre-trial data. I'm actually I'd rather start by let's dig a little deeper into in, into the prison population data, and we'll look at it by county. So what I'm going to do is take a look at uh, the next at the next data set. This is I believe an aggregated version. I'm guessing the prison summary is an aggregated version of the prison population data set. So I'm going to download that this one. I'm going to do it in the same step here. I'm going to say prison population. Again, I could tidy this up a little bit, but there isn't much, besides changing the labels, there isn't much I would add uh, to this graph. This is a lot more detail. Uh, this looks by year, but it also looks by state, by um, the region. I'm guessing like the region 
I'm guessing the region of the state, so really just for uh, large reason, regions. If we want to do a graph, that would be another way we could divide this data down. Um, and then there's the overall population and the prison population, so not just rate. That's useful if we're going to want to be do certainly if we're doing statistical tasks, that'll be one um, essential part of it. Okay, let's take a look at, hmm, okay. I'm going to start by looking at today's data. I'm not going to look at, at change over time just yet. I'm going to say prison population. I, I, we have a choice when we have this many variables. We choose what to segment on. I'm going to look at the most recent year we have, which is 2016. I'm going to aggregate it by state. So one thing I'm uh, I'm interested in is I could summarize the total population. I could summarize. Oops. Uh, do I need NARM equals true? Probably. I'm looking at the total population today, and I can say the population incarcerated, prison population. Hmm, that's not what I like to see. I wonder if this if this has missing data. Uh, I wonder if I certainly wouldn't expect zero across multiple any state, let alone multiple. Okay, we have loads of missing data. Uh, let me see. That's definitely important. Um, where can let me see? How can I see how much data we're missing? I could say group by year and summarize the sum of is NA prison population. This is how many rows are missing in each year. If I view this, we used to be missing, oh, I, I'm instead of sum, I'm going to do mean. Say what fraction are we missing? Um, I'm doing it. I, I, I didn't mean that step. I meant mean here. So we used to, to never have data on prison population. It's been improving, uh, improving in terms of getting more data, um, but it looks like there's still lots of, it could be counties that don't have their own jail, but I'm guessing more likely it's just missing data, something we don't have. Uh, one thing that surprises me, I wonder, hmm, does it, I'm wonder, first I wonder if the code book mentions that. One thing that I'm suspecting is that, here I'm looking at one county, aha, in 1983, we started reporting it. Okay, and then I'm wondering if you should just filter out any case where prison population is in A. Of course, the challenge there. Hmm. Okay, I'm. I think that's probably the approach. What's important there to note is then we're not looking at the total population of a state. We would be looking. Well, first, I can't do it in um 2016. We're missing prison data 2016, but we have. Really, this is a surprising amount of missing data to me that 45%. If I look at prison population 2015, if I view it, this is saying that not far from half of the rows, this is only 2015, one row per county, not far from half of the rows will be missing data. Okay, it looks like, for example, we're missing data from all of Arizona. All right. We're also, if we go to California, we're missing data from specific counties. It could be smaller counties. Here's how, um, sometimes it's worth when we're missing data, try and get a sense of why we're, uh, why, why it's missing. And uh, there's no question that some states are just fully missing data. Let's go ahead and remove those for a moment. So remember the question we're asking now is, what kind of data are we missing? This is a data cleaning step that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to take prison population. I'm going to group by the state. I'm going to filter some not is in a prison population is greater than zero. That is, you have to have at least one non-NA uh, non observation. I could have said any not. I probably, that's even easier. I could say any not is in a at this value. So now I could say if I counted state, there used to be 51. There, uh, we only have data from 29 states. Reasonable, we can, so we can often work with that. Within that subset, what fraction of data are we missing? 
I can say summarize sum is, uh, I should have done mean, is NA. I'm going to ungroup and ask mean is NA of prison population. So I can say we're missing 14, smaller. The other question I would have is are we more likely to be missing the data for smaller counties? If that's the case, um, it's, it's definitely worth remembering as a bias, and it's also worth understanding is that because they don't have a prison, or is it uh, like maybe it's sent to another county, or is it because it's a smaller county, we just we haven't collected that data? That'll make a difference in any conclusions. So percent, I'm going to call this, let me see. All right, so if I want to answer that question, what I would do is, hmm. I can probably bin the population. Let me see. Yeah, this is probably the way to do it. What I do is say prison population is cut. Oh, uh, no, I take that back. Say population. Oh, I just remembered. Oh, I completely forgot there was very critically. There's a pop category here as well. So that's a really important question is do we have NAs? It could be one subcategory. It could be a tiny town with, with no people, let's say no Native American um, people in prison, and that's why it's NA. One of the critical questions is, do we have any case where prison population equals zero? Yes, we do. So that means the NAs are probably not, the NAs are probably not zero. The NAs are probably missing data. All right, how much population are we missing in terms of, um, uh, let's, I'll say, group by state? I'm really dwelling on the missing data. That's because you can get a lot wrong with, if, if you don't realize how, how you're dropping out missing data. And you say, if I group by state, I could summarize, what's the total, total pop missing prison? What I'm looking for is the sum of the population, not across the whole state, but only in the cases where the prison population is NA. And that's total pop. I could also divide that by the sum of the population. It's kind of like a weighted mean. I'm also getting all of this wrong because I need, I just, if I don't have the population, if I filter not is in a population, I can't do really anything with that, I think. Okay, so, and if I arrange by descending total pop missing prison. So what this is showing is in um, Nevada, I think. Um, uh, no, nope, nope, North Dakota. We're missing about 10% of people live in a county where we don't have the prison data. In a couple other states, it's up to 7 nine, or 9%, um, but we, we move our way down. In most states, we're missing only, only a, a, a few, only a few percent of the population lives in a county where we're missing the, um, uh, this data. So that's one way to, to ask the question. Another way to ask it is, here we go, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly say, in our non-missing states, oops, we go, uh, we can also ask, that's one question, I'm going to ungroup back here, in our non-missing states, we can group by the category of the population, so we can say population category is I like the cut function, it's built in, and what it says is I can say cut the population by 0, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100, 1,000, up to infinity. And then I summarize the, um, I need the, I'll need to filter out the, oh, I, I, oh yeah, I already filtered not is an A population. And then I summarize the fraction, the fraction of counties missing. So I'd say percent missing is mean of is NA population prison. Population prison? Prison population? Uh, prison population. Here we go. I also want observations as N. All right, the 0 to 10 is probably a little aggressive. We have very few above 100,000, so I'm going to, I'm just widening these a little bit. We have a few, um, NAs I guess could be population zero. Well, that's annoying. We have four, a uh, handful of counties, population zero. What this is showing is in our 
tiny um, in our... Ah, what this is showing is everywhere from... Um, we are missing data. We have NA prison population in anywhere from 20 to 35 percent um, of counties that, that fall in this lower range, like these low population counties. But the high population counties, we almost always have the data. So this, this looks almost paradoxical because remember, we're missing data on only a small fraction of, but most people live in a county where we have the, the prison population data. But we don't, um, but many counties do not um, have prison population data. It's worth remembering that, that distinction. This is me saying smallest, pretty small, um, kind of small, and then large. And these large counties, uh, more than 10,000 people, which makes up a good chunk of our counties um, and a lot of population, we're usually not missing the data. Okay, that was a little exploration of missing data. If I were doing proper statistical testing and if I had more than an hour, I would spend more time digging into that and ensuring we understand the reasons why. In the meantime, I'm mostly going to be working with non-missing states. So we're dropping, we're dropping, I think I was, so we have 51 states including District of Columbia. So dropping 22 non-missing states, distinct state is, yeah, we have 29. So dropping 22 states where we never have prison population data. That's one thing worth knowing. But we keep all the data otherwise. Okay. So within these, um, we're also dropping, and I'm going to add this here. We're looking, yeah, I'm saying we're looking at the year 2015 most recent with prison data. We're dropping 22 states. We're probably going to look over time. It just noticed that by looking at 2015, we got a better sense of what data is missing, the problems we're running to. Um, and we're dropping, let's see. Oh, yeah, we're dropping the, uh, what is uh, in my original data? How often am I missing population? How often am I missing uh, the population column. 20% of our rows, I would put this in a percent here so that I actually say 20% of our row, oh, scales percent of our rows, of our observations, where we don't have overall population data. Again, what's missing doesn't mean it's zero. Okay, so let's start digging into the, the, the data we do have. Uh, what I would look at is I do need to filter for not is in a prison population, which is even less data. And I would need to say, I, I want to what if I want to do it a state aggregation? I could start with summarize sum of, um, let me see, state is sum of, of sum of, probably want to, uh, oh, uh, what am I doing? I want to aggregate both population and prison population. I've removed the missing data, so I can actually do a summarize at for population and prison population and say sum. It's pretty handy for aggregating multiple columns. And now I can say incarceration rate. I think our incarceration rate is total prison population is divided by population. Um, if, if I'm missing something, it should be lifetime risk. Just note I don't have as much experience with this kind of data. So we're looking at, so now I'm looking at 29 states and their incarceration rate, at least in terms of the counties we have data on. And now I can, I can arrange in descending incarceration rate. Okay, so the incarceration rate basically never goes above 1%. It's highest in, I believe, is Arizona and um, Mississippi, I think this is. Uh, so if I wanted to get a sense of these trends, I could start just with incarceration on a state level. What I would want to do then is say, um, let's check the cool. uh, what I want to do is go to my, uh, well, I have some GG, I have some ggplot2 uh, set up for that. I have map data state. You always want to table diff this. These are my regions. So we can say, um, this is actually data on Every region, it's longitude and latitude, because I'm going to be creating some some um, cor corpleths of st um, of state level incarceration uh, rates. So the uh, 
remind myself quickly, how am I going to turn the state codes into region names? Why is it lowercase? I really didn't think it was lowercase last time I looked. That's funny. Uh, all right, well, I'm, well there is a state abbreviation, which is every abbreviation. There's also state. Is there a state name? There is. I feel like that should be a data set. That should certainly be in a, in a um, data set somewhere. I'm trying to remember if there's a table sitting around that has the states. Is there? This is, oh, nope. I think these are all built into R, but I really wanted them in a... Ooh. This is... Ah, yes. All right, this is some uh, identification of... Um, we've got an abbreviation. We've got a name in the map. The polyname is crazy annoying. Uh, that's like a whole joining um, uh, thing. I don't quite know how to uh, mess with that. But do I have anything else where I... <laughs> Wait, all these are in are built in. Yeah, they're built in. Isn't that something? It really is. Okay, I'm gonna teach you a trick. I've got names I want to turn. I I've got here we go. Uh huh. I've got names I want to turn them into abbreviation. Uh, abbreviations I want to turn them into names. I have my abbreviations. I have my names. Anyone seen the match function? Back before inner join was all the rage, we in R used to use match. We would say take our by state summarized data and say by state mutate name equals it'll be state dot name. I'll just call it state. Bracket um where the name uh, was matched with this value, the state. I'm going to call it state name, was matched to the state abbreviation vector. This works because abbreviation and state.name are the same length and they correspond one to one. So I just added the state name as a column. I could have done this other ways. I could have created a data set. I feel like there's one out there. But um, I'm also going to do two lower on this. I'm going to do string to lower from the, uh, from the tidyverse packet, from the string r package. And I've got our lowercase state names. Why did I go about all that effort? Because I need to inner join it with our map data at the state level. I need to do it by state, by, let's see, state name. I'm going to actually call this region. It makes it so easy to do this join. Every one of these joins is going to be a little bit different, but you've probably seen me do these core plus before. Now what I have is our variable of interest incarceration rate alongside our map data. So now is a step where we make a choropleth. We feed this into ggplot2. We say, I want, I want, um, let's see, longitude on the x-axis, latitude on the y-axis, group is group, and I want geome polygon. This creates a state, ooh, I just realized, let's left join. Oh, I meant right join because I may want to keep our, all 48 of our continental states. That's our map. I can actually add theme map. Oh, it's in GG themes, I think. Theme map. Oh, I do not have GG themes installed. I'm going to quickly install that because theme map is pretty great. I don't remember who created GG themes. It might be Bob Rudis, um, but I, I could be wrong in it. And I'm creating a choropleth. Okay. I also usually want to use coord map. This will uh, in enforce a particular projection. All right, so far, just a map. If I add fill equals incarceration rate, that's where we get to create this cor choropleth. Yeah, now what we can see is we're missing data. It's not completely random. It feels like we're missing data in the northwest. We're missing data in some uh, an particular belt near the like, mid-Atlantic states here. Um, and yeah, a couple other states. These are ones where we never have prison data. It also looks like the incarceration rate varies a lot, and we get a sense of how it varies regionally. So we get a sense of, notice the South has the highest incarceration rates, New England the lowest. Um, see? Okay, yeah, again, this is not looking, this isn't looking over time or anything like that. It's certainly, and it's not looking by county, this is aggregating at the state level. But there's a way we can start to get a sense of the, um, uh, 
of, of, the, of the distribution here. Another way we can take a look, we, can, we could look at this by county level. We actually have it originally before we did our aggregation. Let me see, where's my, I'm not going to look at non misses I'm going to look at the original data. Prison, oops, prison population. This is it by county. I can ask a question, let me see, you, where can I get U.S. county, uh, let me see, our map data, I haven't actually made this graph before, so I wanna, but, I, but I may want to. So I'm going to ask, um, where can I find, ooh, map of the counties, hold on, this might be right. What I need is a county level data set of um, on the U.S., here we go, oh wow. I think this is, it might be easier than I thought it was. What I do is map data county kibble diff. Oh, there's my, there's my counties, region and subregion. So I've got my region already named. I'm going to, region comes out of state. I'm going to take a look at prison population. I'm going to add region. I, oh, uh, wait. Does it already have region? Oh, uh, no, it has, re oh, this is region, it's not um, the right place. Oh, but I do have state. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to replace region here just because I want it to be easy to join. Now it's Alabama, etc. It's lowercase. And the subregion is going to be, let's take a look, we got um, Autoga County. Um, let's take a look at the data. Ah, probably need to remove the word county. So if I look at prison population and I count county name, I don't really need to count it. It looks like it always has the word county in it. I wonder if it ever has a word like township. Well, those ones like census area, they're probably relatively rare. So I can actually check that really quickly by saying filter not string detect county Oh, um, oops, I meant, yeah, county, look for the word county. And it'll be called, what's the column called? County name. So if I change county, if I change, if I create a column called subregion that is really county, and I say string remove, oh, string to lower, string remove, oh, um, I just checked this. How many counties are missing? We have parishes, we have boroughs, we have a lowercase city. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, let me see, I'm going to remove parish, as the parish looks a little common, and I might as well remove city. What I'd say is, um, is take your county name and remove, oh, I'm going to string the lower inside. I'm going to say turn it to lowercase, then remove the word county or the word parish, or city. I need to fix up a little. It's not going to match everything. I'm not going to go about, I'm not sure how, say, census areas is, is going to match up. We're not going to match everything. But here and now, I can do a little closer to left join on the county data. So now I can say, let's join on, let's, um, let me also add incarceration rate is prison population divided by population. I'm keeping it percentages rather than out of 100,000. I tend to think a little easier in percentages. And we join it by our two columns in the county data. So this is more learning how to do choroplats, uh, is you find the data, in this case the county database, and then you, oops, and then you add your region, subregion. And this is a huge join, isn't it? Oh, I just remembered. Oh, oh no. I just remembered we, we, I didn't divide it down at all. I need to look only at pop category total. I didn't look that that earlier either, which messed up my state level results. Not, yeah, this was a, that was a mistake. I would need to say, what I need to do is say, um, by state, I would say pop category. I'm starting with total. Uh, okay, uh, it's very similar results, but um, a different approach. 
I would look, now here I'd look only at pop category equals total. Oh, I need to look, oh, I also need to look only at 2015. Right, I could later do an animation. I'm not, I'm not doing it quite yet. Take this data, and now if I join it to county, okay, yeah, now, now I feel uh, I'm going to right join, not left join. So this, I've been thinking a little bit ahead. I've been working fast with it. I've been speaking. This is our prison data. I've added a region with a lowercase state name, a subregion, and incarceration rate. And now I'm saying I want to join that to our county map data. The reason I have is now I can make a core clef. I can use the exact same code I used earlier. Latitude, longitude, fill. And now, here we go. We have a way um, more detailed uh, map. So one of the things I notice, if I take a look, is, is we have an outlier here that I think is messing up the color scale in general. There's one county, it looks like has a, um, I'm going to quickly call this county overall. It's only, or it's only the total uh, populations, not any of the subgroups we looked at. And if I try taking this and saying arrange by descending incarceration rate, we have, it looks, yep, it's in Nevada County, where it shows the total as being 32 out of 303 people in prison. I have no idea if that's Pearson County. I have no idea if there's something about, uh, maybe that's a, um, it, it, it could be it could be real. It could be a mistake. I don't see anything saying it's it's a town that has particularly important prison. Um, but notice that's a ten percent incarceration rate. The next highest we have is three. And um, generally, hmm, one of the things we can do is filter for a minimum level number of people. Uh, let's see. Uh, we could all, we can also just. Um, we can just limit it. If it's one case, we could, this is not amazing, but I could say uh, I want to ensure the incarceration rate is less than 0.05, given that we know it's only removing one person. Notice we've made a more informative graph already because there's more of a distribution. I probably want to change the, the, um, the, sc the scale call fill gradient. I like something called gradient 2, where I would say low equals blue, high equals red. I need to give it a midpoint. Let's say here 0.02 maybe. Um, oh, mid midpoint is 0.02. And I also will quickly want to say this is a percentage. Labels equals percent format. I'm going to put the midpoint a little lower, the point where, where blue shifts to red. And I'm going to, oops, I need to put this before the right join because I need to leave some data gray. Okay, so we notice our big blocks of missing data. And we also, uh, that, that's one of the reasons it's great to make a map is you understand, earlier we were wondering why is the missing data here, not here. It's like, ah, it's, it's really geographically um, structured. So the, um, so I'm taking a look through here. And yeah, we see a lot of counties with high incarceration rates include Texas. Uh, there's one that's a, there's some of the very high ones here in the um, in the um, south, uh, southeast. And uh, yeah, so we're learning a little bit about this um, about this distribution at a county level. I can also t I can do this as an animation. Uh, let's see. I can to see how this trend has been changing over time. Let's say I looked at it only. I'm going to look only for people. This is this is county overall 2015. I'm going to I'm going to be a little lazy and just copy it. See, uh, and just copy and say county overall overall time. I'm still filtering just for total. I'm not going to, do I filter the incarceration rate? I'm going to have to take, take a quick look at this. Uh, so here's our county overall. Cross all time. I'm also going to, I'm going to, here I'm going to say filter not is in a incarceration rate. Oh, I, I'll need that in the uh, after step.
I'm going to sort, sort it. Okay, what I'm seeing is McPherson has been an unusual county. Wow, it used to be a way higher percentage of people in jail. I don't have... Uh, it, it could it could be a data entry bug. It could be something a bit unusual about the the, the city. Um, okay, I may just remove it. Uh, it, it is certainly hmm. Well, now that I've set an explicit midpoint, it might not be as bad. What I'm trying to think through what the animation will look like. That's what I'm what I'm mentally um, working on. I really feel I'm concerned about this county that's going to dilute to to kind of blow out the whole scale. I'm going to remove it. It's not that important to the to the, to the map overall. Moved a county with an unusually high uh, rate throughout history, and I'm going to say. I'm going to load up GGAnimate. I'm going to remove this filter. I'm going to, and I'm going to do the right join here. The, actually, I take it back. I like the right join as part of the plot because it makes the graph not so useful. What I'm going to do is add transition manual. I'm going to say I want a separate plot. I want a separate plot for each of these, um, these uh, a separate frame for every item here. I'm going to say transition manual by year. I'm going to look over time from 1983. Looks, oh, well, actually, let me quickly see. Filter, um, arrange, oh, count year. Yep, from 1983 to 2015. I'm going to be looking at uh, at the distribution of prison po of incarceration. Again, so far I'm just looking geographically. I'm not looking at um, at race, but the um, or gender. The I uh, go. I am going to say transition manual year. I'm also going to make this slightly easier. I'm going to say year mod five equals zero. I'm going to take every fifth year. I'm doing that to try and make the graph a little faster to render. I don't want this. Heck, I'm going to do it every decade. Do one frame for each of our um, future data points, so it's pretty fast. I just wanted to see the animation really quickly. Here's our change. All right, great. Uh, that was fast enough. I'm going to look at every even year. So, uh, go. It's taking a minute to render, but the um, goes. What I'm going to take a, be looking at here is a, an animation of the changing. Um, did I? I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out why. Uh, where's the missing data? All right. So this is a distribution of changing incarceration rates over time. Uh, one thing is we're having a similar problem before of, of washing out, where the. Um, here it is. We have a very similar problem where we have, where we have our ten percent so are, are, are making everything else um, look strange. So I actually probably need remembering how scale fill works. Something like limits. Yeah, I think I can say limits equals maybe it's lim. I don't quite remember. Point oh four. I'm going to do it without a transition, and I'm going to filter for one year. This will let me ensure before I take, spend a bit of time rendering it. Yeah, so that looks um, that ah, limits is right. That's good to know. So if I say 0.3, oops, I need to say a year. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it back in. I can I can create an animation of the um, incarceration rate. So this is incarceration rate per county over time. Take a minute to render. It's um, um, uh, thirty something years. So 
So yeah, it's, it's really, um, I used to think Coraplex was something you had to really work a lot in GeoData to, to use, but I've been so excited with how ggplot2, um, the tools ggplot2 uh, allows uh, for visualizing them. One thing maps also remind you of is regional confounding. So if we made a scatter plot, um, the missing data is switching places. One thing I, I discover here is that um, ggAnimate handles missing data differently than, than default data would. Hmm. Yo, I've seen some regions turn, ah, oh, look at that. Did you see Texas turn red like that? Watch Texas. Watch the bottom of the map, the center bottom of the map. There's years where there's missing data, but you can really see. I may want to filter just for Texas and try that visualization. Okay, uh, so I'm going to. You know what? I am going to do a joined version. Here it is, and I'm going to. I've got this graph. This is one. This is one graph. The overall graph. Just, I'm going to look just at Texas. So notice I, I am doing some copy-pasting of code, um, certainly not my favorite approach, but I can say region is Texas, recall that Texas is lowercase, and now I'll get just, just that section of the map. Be less data so it'll render a little bit faster. Here's a core plot of, tech, of just Texas. What? Oh, promise it. Ah, there it is. So I really would need a title here to say what year it is. It's very frustrating to not know when it's when it turns the 1990s. It looks like there are some years with missing data, and then wow, what happened there in that missing data? Oof. This actually makes me think that over time by state is going to be some interesting trends, um, and. I'm looking by county here, but we were looking by state before. And if I said, let's see, it's not missing states. No, that's just 2015. Am I right? Yes. I'm going to say it's just 2015. If I look at prison population, and I filter just for, notice I keep going back to the original data, creating new cleaned versions, and I filter for region is always, oh, um, nope, it's, State is always TX, Texas. Nope, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. My bad. I'm going to filter not is in a population and not is in a prison population. Again, I'm going to, for now, I'm going to keep looking at total. I'm, I'm certain I won't have time to look at, 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 at subgroups. Um, there's a lot that can be done with this data. So if I look at pop, uh, yep, here's our total. I can group by both year and state and summarize at the population and prison population variables. Take the sum of both. Similarly, I can add incarceration rate. Incarceration rate is And now I have by state and year. Remember, this is not the total population. This is the population of counties for which we have data. That's going to be uh, certainly a complication. Um, I realize, in fact, with Texas, it might be a nightmare. Let's take a look at what Texas looks like over because of that, that this brief time where it could be passing through 1%, but I think it's missing data. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this. If I say by state year, filter state is Texas, I should have one row for each year. I'm going to throw an I'm going to throw an ungroup after that summarize. I don't want to leave it grouped. And if I say what is the population of the state? Oops. Um, uh, year population, total population. Here we go. We have enormous amounts of missing data. So we see a trend of increasing population, except for a region where we have missing data. That would mess up everything, especially because um, those years, uh, those population, I'm going to put the, um, 
expand limits y is 0. In particular, remember that the counties that are missing are not a random subpopulation. Uh, they could be counties that have unusually high or low incarceration rates. Uh, the, um, let me see. Yeah, uh, I, I'm thinking about how one would deal with it. I think I would start to deal with it by, by having a summary, uh, having a summarize in terms of amount of missing data. So I'm instead of, all right, I'm going to approach it a bit differently. I'm going to group by year and state. I'm going to say population is the sum of population, but remove NAs. Prison population is the sum of prison population, but remove NAs. And I'm going to, and then I'm going to add one called missing counties, and it's going to be, I'll say just fraction of counties are missing. Though fraction of population in those counties might be more. In fact, I'm going to say no. Wait, I wouldn't have. Uh, of course, I wouldn't have um, missing. I wouldn't have that necessarily for all of them. So I'm going to say mean is NA prison population. So now if I look at Texas, um, pop, okay, I'm, I'm missing something. Oh, here's my population. Oh, right, it starts at um, 1970 would be, be zero. Uh, missing prison mean, I would have expected it to always be this to be mean is in a prison population. I would have expecting, I would have expected this to be one. Uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, what? Yep, prison population is N A. Frac mean is N A. Prison population would be the, I would expect to be the fraction of the time. Hmm. Is it ever not zero? Am I sorted in some strange order? It never says missing prison. Mean, how often is, oh. Summer, what if I did this without grouping by, what would happen? I don't know what I'm missing in this mean. Oh, I do. Um, the problem is that I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, wow, that's a very frust, very frustrating problem. I need to put it first because it was using. I, I, I think I've even run this before on a screencast. Is that it was using another column uh, as the other prison population column that I just defined as the answer. Here we go. Oops. Why did population, ah, here, 100% is missing the prison data. Uh, population is now steady. It's the, oh, um, I'm, I'm not filtering for Texas. Ah, there it is. We used to miss 100% of the data. And suddenly we miss 85%. And then we missed two percent. That was me trying to take it. So that's where missing data will really kill you. Uh, in fact, I'm probably going to want to say filter at remove any point where I could probably say more than ten. Per Looking here, I could say more than ten percent of counties are missing. It's it's a it's very sloppy, but it, it'll get in the right area of like let's make that graph, but let's not include um because uh, if, if I wanted to graph incarceration rate. This is, uh, is exactly the wrong kind of thing that would happen, is that, oh, suddenly some counties are missing prison data, they're treated as zero. Um, what I need to do is I need, I do need to filter only for, I need to say only we're not is in a prison population in this summary. Go to a bit of work, oh, oops, I have not saved once. In the wrong directory, that's okay, I'll get it later. Um, uh, 
here it is. I'd say of the, ah, that's actually a little better. What I'm actually doing is saying of the counties where we have a, pr a prison population, what is the, um, uh, what fraction of the population is incarcerated? That's a better graph. It's still not perfect because the, the counties that are missing are not, uh, are not meaningful. I probably still would say filter um, missing prison is at most 10%. We have most of your data. Oops, 10%. So this would jump over those years where we didn't have as good data from Texas. Uh, but this, I think, would be a place where we'd start looking at changing incarceration rate. Instead of saying state in Texas, I'd say stay, I could compare a couple of states. I'd say Texas, New York, California, Massachusetts. I could say um, color is state. Now I start looking, I can start looking at trends over time. We also understand that there's missing data all throughout this. We see some areas like California has been increasing and decreasing. Um, we could take a look at Arizona, which, which topped our current level of incar incarceration. We could take a look at... Um, what else was at the top? Uh, I think that's Mississippi. Yeah, and we start to get a sense of some of these trends. Unfortunately, I'm out of time for today, but this is uh, this is just a start in terms of how I'd start exploring the data. And I could have sliced it a lot of ways and asked more. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to look at um, at race within the or, or gender within the prison population data. This is really. It's really interesting and relevant data, but it's also data we have to be careful with, not just from a sensitivity perspective, but from a data, from a, um, data quality perspective. We are missing some data, and that can really throw off our conclusions. So to some extent, I am glad that I was able to spend time really digging into what kind of data was missing, how it was distributed both geographically and across time, and how we um, and was able to create some some animated coral plaths where we where we got a sense of the changing face of incarceration within the the United States. One thing I'm really already seeing here, if I'd had more time, that I definitely would have looked at, is it looks like you have a change tr changing trend. I know New York has is, is famously uh, New York City in particular has famously gotten safer in the last few decades, uh, and my understanding is incarceration rate has generally gone down too. But you see an opposite trend in states like Arizona. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if there were uh, social and racial justice uh, components to that that are really um, uh, that are really important. What what happened in Mississippi is is some between uh, the '90s and today is somewhat extraordinary. Yeah. So I'm glad I got to take a look at this data set. I'm sorry I didn't get to dig into it um, a little deeper and a little more and more carefully. But I hope you, you um, were inspired to take take a look yourself or to honor Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Day or um, in whatever way you see fit with, uh, with data science or otherwise. So thanks very much for joining me. I'm David Robinson, and I'll see you next week.